Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Let us worship God. Jesus, good shepherd of the sheep, by whom the lost are sought and guided into the fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. And lead us and we, that we may be with you, our Maker and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And let us sing, Thine is this glory. safety. Whoever remains under the protection of the Almighty can say to God, you are my defender and protector. You are my God. In you I trust. God will keep you safe from all hidden dangers and from all deadly diseases. God will cover you with God's wings. You will be safe in God's care. God's faithfulness will protect and defend you. You need not fear any dangers at night or sudden attacks during the day, or the plagues that strike in the dark, or the evils that kill in daylight. A thousand may fall dead beside you, ten thousand all around you, but you will not be harmed. You will look and see how the wicked are punished. You have made God your defender, the Most High your protector, and so no disaster will strike you. No violence will come near your home. God will put his angels in charge of you to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands to keep you from hurting your feet on the stones. You will trample down lions and snakes, fierce lions and poisonous snakes. God says, I will save those who love me and will protect those who acknowledge me as God. When they call to me, I will answer them. When they are in trouble, I will be with them. I will rescue them and honor them. I will reward them with a long life. I will save them. May God bless the reading and the hearing of this God's holy word. Amen. Amen. Maybe you've seen the stories that headline on the internet or in newspapers quoting this song. They include stories like this one 
tithe-paying, Bible-believing, Holy Spirit-filled Christians have a Psalm 91 protection policy against COVID-19, also known as coronavirus, according to New Zealand's popular multi-campus Destiny Church leader, Ryan Tamaki. Or because of Psalm 91, some pastors, like Bishop Gerald O'Glenn of Virginia, firmly believed that God would protect them and held church services in defiance of the stay-at-home order. And then he died. Yep, and then he died. And now his wife is sick, too. The church's daughter, who is now taking over the church for her father, has advised all of the church members to stay at home, just in case you're wondering. With at least 60,000 people dead from COVID-19 in the United States alone, a good number of them Christians and Jews, we know that the so-called protection policy isn't working. So what are Christians supposed to do with the promises in a psalm that seems to promise a get-out-of-jail-free card to disaster, disease, and destruction, like that listed in Psalm 91? First, let's start by saying that life is not a game of monopoly. There are no guarantees, we do not get to roll doubles, and we do not get do-overs. There are no free parking or community chess spots on the game of life. There are no places like Connecticut Avenue or Baltic Avenue where all you have to do is pay $4 as long as there are no hotels built up. There is no place on the map that is free from tragedy or pain. Or pain. Now admittedly, we're not likely to run into a hurricane in Colorado, and Florida isn't likely to see an avalanche. But both states have their own kind of natural disaster. Let's also consider the missionary and the lion. Once upon a time, there was a missionary and a native Christian walking through the African bush, and suddenly they hear the roar of a lion. The African Christian began to run, but the missionary decided to show how faithful and how bold his faith really was, and so he prayed, Lord, please make this, Christ this lion a Christian. The African turned and looked at his friend and said, What are you doing? I'm praying that God will make this lion a Christian lion. Are you nuts? The African said. We tried that years ago. They're all Christian. What do you mean? The missionary said. The local just shook his head and ran to safety, but the missionary stayed and began to wonder if maybe his friend didn't have a point, because as the lion started to get closer, he heard the youngest lion pray. Lord, thank you for this meal we are about to receive. Amen. In other words, the natural world behaves in natural ways. Lions are going to hunt. And unfortunately, viruses mutate and spread in natural ways. So no, I don't think you should go walking around undefended in the African bush, or for that matter, any place where there are large predatory species or handle venomous snakes to show how godly you are. And no, I don't think you should ignore the best science has to offer on how you respond to any given virus. Because for 2,000 years, no, let me revise that, for 5,000 years, Christians and Jews have been trusting the best science of the time as part of the way that God shields the people of God. Some speculate that the reason the Jewish people survived the plague of boils, which we think was probably anthrax, was that they had been practicing a form of inoculation, that they were using smaller and easier forms of the pox, probably cowpox, to survive the kinds of viruses that were causing the pox that were what killed the Egyptians. And during the plague in medieval Europe, the people that worked as doctors, both Jews and Christians, practiced forms of sanitation that were rev revolutionary for the time. Yes, some of them were kind of weird, and no, I don't recommend leeches, but that was the best science they had at the time. And in 1758, a congregational minister and president of what would later become Princeton University a man by the name of Jonathan Edwards died after having received an experimental technique.
the earliest smallpox vaccine, as a way to encourage those people around him to try the vaccine. His son-in-law, David Brainerd, would survive the vaccine and then take it to local Native American tribes in order to preserve their lives because they were dying at twice the rate of the whites around them. He would take it into places like New York and New Jersey, Pennsylvania and what would become Ohio, Indiana, and Michigan. And he did it as a way to honor his father-in-law, who had been one of the first people in the colonies to advocate for full civil rights for Native Americans. So when I look at Psalm 91, I have never understood why some people think it stands in opposition to medical treatment and scientific advancement. To me, that makes absolutely no sense. God creates us as thinking, creative beings. We are called to experiment, to create, to do, and to make. In doing this, we honor God with the gifts that we have been given. To do less would be to dishonor God. This text also stands as the basis of one of the three temptations that Satan offers Jesus in the wilderness. Then the devil took him up to the high place in Jerusalem and set him on one of the highest points of the temple and said to him, If you are God's son, throw yourself down from here. For the scripture, this scripture, Psalm 91, says, God will order his angels to take good care of you. It also says they will hold you up in their hands so that not even your feet will be hurt on the stones. It's a direct quote from this passage. Jesus responds with a quote from Deuteronomy. The scripture says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Jesus himself puts a limit on how far we can take Psalm 91. Instead of using it as a blank check for how far we can get away with what we can ask God to do, Jesus says, no, do not test God. The one person in all of history who should have had the right and the ability to use this psalm chooses not to use it as blanket protection. And yes, now I'm starting to feel like all that fine print at the end of the new car commercial. You know what I mean. It's $249 a month for 42 months, but $492,000 is due with the um, signing for qualified buyers, tax tag, and title extra, but heaven help you if you're not a qualified buyer. The problem with this song is we all know, we've all seen the plague that strikes in the night. Some of us have seen the screaming wind that tears through the trailer park and leaves death in its wake. We've met the lion that comes in the dark, or the husband that murders the wife and then blows his brains out. We've seen children dying of famine and locusts on the fields of Africa. We've seen it and know that some of the people it affects are good and godly people. We've seen murders and rapists walk. We've seen genocidal maniacs get off scot-free. So how can we possibly accept this song as true and not some kind of crazy dream of someone who doesn't have a clue about reality? Where's the good news? It's right here. When you call on me, I will answer you. When you are in trouble, I will be with you. All the rest of it comes with a little asterisk and a whole bunch of fine print, but not that verse. No conditions, no ifs, no credit score checks, no questions about have you prayed enough, tithed enough, given enough, believed enough, Holy Spirit filled enough, done enough, or any of the rest of it. This is a free gift, freely offered, freely given. We have to do nothing to receive it. God promises to answer the least little whimpering call. It does not even require words. A simple moan will do it, and God will be there. In that moment, when all of our pain, all of our worry, all of our doubt and fear come crashing down, remember those words. When you call, I will answer you. When you are in trouble, I will be with you. And then, let all of the asterisks, all of the conditions, all of the fine print, all of the rage, all 
of the grief out. For it is not just yours. Every spear, every bullet, every landmine that has shattered a heart first shattered God's. Every criminal act, every act of racial prejudice, every act of hatred against a person because of their gender, their sexual orientation or gender expression, including the three trans women burnt to death in Puerto Rico in the last 10 days, has broken God's heart. Every army that has gone to war has trampled over God's good earth and slaughtered God's children. Every plague, every famine has killed God's people. And it is God's tears that pour down for each and every soul that has been lost. The word we translate here as Almighty is El Shaddai. It literally means God of the breast, the God who wants to gather us in and shelter us in arms that feed and shelter us from God's own body is the God who will answer us, who will hear us when we cry. For this is the God who hears and weeps with us over the brokenness and loss of the world. It is this God in Jesus who stood on a hill outside of Jerusalem and wept over her, but he longed to gather her and all of the world like a mother hen gathering her frightened, scattered chicks. It is this God in Jesus who stretched out broken arms on the cross for us. Perhaps more than ever, what we need right now is this broken God, not a mighty avenger who swoops in like an eagle, but the desperate, frantic ground bird who defends her nest with all that is in her, feigning a broken wing and leading the raptors away from her chicks when nothing else will do, who returns to the nest in the end, a little broken, battered, a little bloody, but with food for frightened chicks. And let us hear Jesus say, O oh my people, O oh my people, you kill the prophets and stone the messengers that God has sent you. How many times I wanted to put my arms around you, just as a hen gathers her chicks in her wings, but you would not let me. Then let us answer, you are my defender and my protector. You are my God, in you I trust. Amen.
me all you are we who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Here you will find rest for your souls. For I am gentle and humble of heart. I am, whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Blessed are you who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for you will be filled. Blessed are you, strong and faithful God. All your works, the height and depth, echo the silent music of your praise. In the beginning, your word summoned light, and night withdrew, and creation yawned. As ages passed unseen, waters gathered on the face of the earth, and life appeared. When the times at last had ripened and the earth grown full in abundance, you created in your image man and woman as stewards of creation. You gave us breath and speech that the living might find a voice to sing your praise and to celebrate the creation you call good. So now with the powers of heaven and earth we sing the ageless hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O oh, holy God, how wonderful is the work of your hands. When sin had scarred the world, you entered into covenant to renew the whole creation. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, as a father joyfully welcomes his own, you embraced a people as your own and filled them with longing for peace that would last and for justice that would never fail. Through countless generations, your people hungered for the breath of freedom. From them, you raised up Jesus, your child, the living bread in whom the ancient hungers were satisfied. He healed the sick, though he would suffer. He offered life to sinners, though death would hunt him down. But with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms and surrendered his spirit. On the night before he met with death, Jesus came to the table, and with those he loved, he took bread, and he broke it. And he passed it among them and said, This is my body, broken for you. Whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And when that meal was completed, he took the cup, the cup sent out for the one who was to come, and passed it among the disciples, saying to them, This is the cup of the new covenant, shed in blood for the salvation of the world. Whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of me. God of all creation, take this, all of you, and drink from it. Gracious God, as we offer you our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we commemorate Jesus, your child. Death could not bind him, for you raised him up in the spirit of holiness and exalted him as Lord of all creation. Eternal God, let your Holy Spirit move in power over us and these earthly gifts of bread and wine, that they may be a communion of the body and blood of Christ, and that we may become one with him. May his coming in glory find us ever watchful, in prayer, strong in truth and love, and faithful in the breaking of bread, that at last all the peoples will be free, all divisions healed, and with your whole creation we will sing your praise through our Savior Jesus Christ, through Christ, with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor are yours, Almighty Creator, 
forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever believes in me shall never be hungry. Take and eat. Jesus said, I am the vine. And you are the branches. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Take and drink. Let us pray the words of the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Spirit. Alleluia and Amen.